All praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal. We praise Him and we send prayers and salutations upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We bear witness and we testify that there is no Lord worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is His servant and messenger. As to what follows, over the past few weeks, I have taken a keen interest in following a case that's been in the national newspapers. It's a case of a 10-year-old girl by the name of Sarah Sharif that was killed by her father, her uncle, and her stepmother. And I really wanted to dedicate the khutbah to abuse and child abuse that exists. But a few people told me that the reality of this is that it's an isolated incident. And if you were to read the reports of this, new, of this case, you would realize that very rarely do you think as a parent that this could be possible. But over the past few days, with headlines related to the owner of a famous chain in London, the Harrods, having over a hundred cases of abuse covered while he was alive, with headlines from last month, October, where domestic violence was highlighted saying that in the UK, statistically speaking, one in four women experience domestic violence in their adult life. Facts that say every 30 seconds, the police receive a call, a call about domestic violence or abuse in the home. Statistics that prove that even though only 24% of cases are reported every five days a partner is killed either by her husband or an ex in the UK. And then came the shocker of all shockers. An imam in the community from the United States abusing and praying on a revert mother and her child, an underage child. When the indictment came out from the FBI, if you were able to make the ten, ten pages, it would read like it's something from a horror story. And then you begin to realize that abuse is not something uncommon, it's just something unspoken about. Abuse exists in all different forms and types. And is defined as the act of causing someone distress or harm. And it can take many different forms. The main four forms that are defined, or the main four types of abuse that are defined, are physical, emotional, sexual, and neglect. Abuse is a person of power or authority, taking advantage of those who he has authority over. And it's been something that has been coming from the beginning of time. It's not something that's new to us as communities or societies. It's not something that's exclusive to a certain ethnic background. Abuse exists whether you are a Pakistani, whether you are an Arab, whether you are Somali, or whether you are white. It's something that is ripe in all communities, in different forms, as we said physical, emotional, spiritual. The Prophet wasallam came at a time where abuse was present between spouses, where women were taken advantage of, and he came to set a moral standard for all of us to follow. And I don't want to narrow too much onto domestic violence because it deserves a series of khutbahs on its own. I just want to open up the conversation that we should be talking about abuse. We as Muslims have a responsibility to speak about it. We as Muslims, as Allah Azza wa Jal told us, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas, that we were the best of nations brought out to mankind. Why? Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna al munkar. You command with that which is good and you forbid that which is evil. If it exists in our society, we are the ones that should be speaking about it and championing it. Championing it. If it exists in our community, we should be the ones that are calling it out and raising our voice about it. If it exists in our family, we are the ones that should be putting a stop to it. If we are to be truly the best of nations. 
the time of the Prophet sallallahu he came at a time when women could only dream of having rights. It was not something that was given to them. It was not something that there was, they were born with. From a very young age, if they were not buried as a young girl, when they are married, they become the property of their husband. He came, the Prophet sallallahu stood on his member once, as Imam Abi Dawood narrates and collects in his, uh, in his book of hadith. He said, لَقَدْ طَافَ بِآلِ مُحَمَّدْ أو لَقَدْ طَافَ بِنِسَاءِ مُحَمَّدْ نِسَاءٌ كَثِيرٌ يَشْكُونَ أَزْوَاجَهُنْ That the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a lot of visitors of women that were complaining about their husbands. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ أُولَٰئِكَ بِخِيَارِكُمْ Those are not from the good amongst you. They are not from the best amongst you. Meaning that those that are in the cycle of abuse or abusive, they are from the worst amongst you. And then the Prophet ﷺ continued to challenge the societal, the society that was he, he was in, in Hajjatul Wada, the final Hajj of the Prophet ﷺ. One of the biggest and most prominent moments and speeches that he gave to a hundred thousand of his companions, one hundred thousand men with him at that day. Five paragraphs. The fifth of these paragraphs, the Prophet ﷺ dedicated to women. He said, Inna li nisa'ikum alaykum haqqa. That verily your women have a right upon you. Wa lakum alayhunna haqqa. And they, you have a right upon them. And then the Prophet ﷺ concluded by saying, Wa inna man nisa'u awanin indakum. Ya'ni asirat. That these women. He compared them to captives under you, meaning that they are on your responsibility, on your neck, on your shoulder. That it's on you. If you are married, it's your responsibility what happens to your spouse, your wife. And then he said, That you took them by the amana of Allah Azza wa Jal. And they've become halal for you by the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when people come here to the masjid to come and do their nikah and they say upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the word of Allah azza wa jal, it is not a light word. It is not a light word. Upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where when abuse is present in our houses? Where is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when it comes to the way you speak to your wife, when it comes to the way you treat your wife, when it comes to the way that you even playful with your wife? Where is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who used to choose the best of names for Aisha radiallahu anha, who used to even play with her, who used to move her around the way? Where is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when you are laying physical hands is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu just when he comes to the mahr and the dowry? No! The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu is every single day. Where is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when you lay your hands on a ten-year-old daughter? Where is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when men and women from our community are fooling around, sleeping around while they are married? Or do you think the word of Allah Azza wa Jal is any lighter? Do you think the word of Allah Azza wa Jal is any lighter? Who is Allah? The one who destroyed Fir'aun? The one who destroyed Qarun? You think you or abuser is any better? Any stronger? Any mightier? Any more richer? Any more powerful? You think you can protect yourself when the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal comes to you? And wallahi, the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal will come to every abuser. Inna Allah yumhilu lidhalim That Allah gives a leash, extends for the oppressor Hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflit When he takes him There is no way to flee There is no way to flee In today's khutbah I wanted to share three messages Three messages The first Is for us as a community Don't think because the abuse is not in your household, you are absolved of guilt. Don't think because you hear of something and you do not act upon it and you do not put a stop to it, 
all of a sudden you are innocent. Just because you know of abuse, whether it's within your family, extended family, within your friends. And wallahi, it's sad that there are men that do these things, then have a friendship group that they can tell and speak about and boast about how they abuse their wives or how they abuse their children. Don't think you are innocent. Don't think you have no responsibility. Every single one of us is responsible for that which we know. At the end of the day, we're commanded, safeguard yourself and your families from the hellfire. But there is a communal responsibility. There's an obligation upon the shoulder of all of us. Even if the, even if the responsibility comes in the smallest form. Man ra'a minkum munkaran, whoever amongst you sees evil, then let them change it with their hand. If they are unable to, then with their mouth. If they are unable to, then with their heart. And hate it with the heart, and that is the lowest level of Iman. The second message is to the abuser. Don't ever feel comfortable. Don't ever feel comfortable. Whether you are here with us present in this masjid, and these people come in all sorts of forms. Abusers do not have a color of skin, do not have an age, do not have a religious affiliation and inclination. And sometimes we as community tend to celebrate these things if they come from a different spiritual group, as it was with this so-called filthy preacher that was caught in the United States. People were speaking, saying, mashallah, he's Salafi. He's of this, see, it's them people. It's them Wahhabis that are always like this. Well, are we gonna abuse, are we gonna ignore the millions of cases that happen? Hundreds of them come from this spectrum. Hundreds come from that spectrum. Abuse doesn't have a religious affiliation. So if you are someone that is abusive, and up until now you felt the comfort and the sitter of Allah Azza wa Jal, you felt that Allah has concealed and covered for you, don't get too comfortable. The, you have an opportunity to repent today, now, to mend, to correct that which you've done wrong to these people, or wait for the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal, because verily the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal is going to be severe. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أما بعد The final message is to my brothers if I put the sisters forward to my sisters to my brothers to the youngers who are suffering in silence victims of abuse whatever it may be I know our community is by no means perfect. But wallahi, there are so many people from that community that want to listen to you, that are here for you. Abuse, and the reports and research that it says about it, one of the main forms that it takes is being isolated as an individual till you feel like you have no help. And we know as Muslims that the greatest help comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no doubt that anyone, man i'tasama bi hablillah, whoever puts his case and puts himself and leans back upon the help and support of Allah Azza wa Jal will never ever ever lose out. However, from the community there are people. There are imams here. There is a masjid here for you. If other masajid fail, turn to this masjid. Wallahi, there are people that want to help you. Whether it's financial help, whether it's support, whether it's aid, but the one thing that you must not do is make excuses for the abuser. Be patient. Patience is part of every relationship. Patience is part of the life of a Muslim. But do not let the statement of be patient allow you to be foolish. In this case of this preacher, when I read the FBI indictment, one of the only things that encouraged me, Actually, the only thing that encouraged me was that the opening statement said that the FBI was notified by a phone call from his wife as she found child pornography on an imam's laptop. We as a community should salute that wife. And news has an example because there is no excuse for those who abuse people in our community. And you know, 
we as Muslims are victims of so many crimes. We are victims of an international genocide. And I want to say this, and it may be egregious to some to hear, that those who abuse, whether by military weapons or by striking of the hand, are both oppressors. And we should treat them both the same. Just like we speak out against these people, we speak out against these. So if you are being abused, if you feel like there is no help, try. It takes a lot of courage. You must muster up some encouragement, but do not let it be too late. The last thing you want to do is to find a child caught in a child pornography site, or even worse, a 10-year-old lifeless on her bed, and her stepmother, her father, her mother, her uncle are all saying, I wish I could have done more. No, you are all guilty. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم أيها المسلمون إن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثنى بملائكته وثلث بكم أيها المسلمون فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على خير خلق محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم كل إخواننا المستضعفين في غزة اللهم كلهم يا رب العالمين اللهم كل إخوان المستضعفين في السودان وسائر بقاع المسلمين اللهم اشف مجارحاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم موتاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم اطعمهم يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب كلهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم كن عونا يا رب العالمين اللهم عجل بنصرك يا الله يا رحمن ويا رحيم واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين just two quick things ان شاء الله straight after the salah before the sunnah we will have a janaza salah so i ask you all to stay for and pray on our sister and second Secondly, our brothers and sisters from Actions for Humanity are outside collecting and raising money for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. 13 months later, they still need our help. Jazakumullah khair wa aqim as-salah.